drivers warming their tyres and they feel as though they have to do the same because it makes such a difference at five miles an hour. Well, Arvid Lindblad in car number 95, he's still only eight years old. And once again, ladies and gentlemen, some of these drivers are just eight years old. They are in their first year of junior school. And yet, on the weekend, they go racing at 50 miles an hour, wheel to wheel, all around the country. Getting lots of uh, mentions. There's people from Greece and Belgium and Turkey listening in. Oliver Behrman on pole position, the Virtus Motorsport Cart. Lucas Ellingham on the outside of row one. Arvid Lindblad and Wesley Mason on row two. Harry Thompson and Theo Mikuris on row three. Josh McLean and Ben Kasperzak on row four. Kaysen Gibson and Oliver Marsh on row five. 29 carts. The five-second board goes up. The engine notes rise. And Ellingham gets a great start when the lights go out. He jumps ahead of Behrman. The pole man gets snookered by the global karting number 99 as they go through the Bruno Ferrari S's and under the bridge the first time. All 29 drivers successfully off the grid. Now they fan out on the banking. Behrman holding on to second place. He's got Wesley Mason in the number eight cart directly behind him. And they catch Ellingham going into the first hairpin. Mason giving Behrman a bit of a shove. And uh, are we we're slowing down. Oh, are we, what is, what's going on? Uh, that was uh, a defensive move there. Kind of caught him by surprise. Ellingham slowed down so much, I thought that might have been a false start. But he was merely defending the inside line on corner four of a 10-minute Cadet Honda race. Interesting. Uh, oh, number 44, Darren Dawson, privateer driver in difficulties at the back of the pack. But now Ellingham has uh, put his foot back on the loud pedal. He leads the end of lap number one from Mason and Behrman. Then it is Ben Kasperzak in cart number seven. Arvid Lindblad in the 95 is fifth. And Harry Thompson drives in the Cadet Honda class for Cutting Edge Racing. Steve Cutting's team based down at uh, Hodderson Kart Club, Rye House, I believe. There or thereabouts. Is next with McLean for Next Gen, Marsh for Project One, Gibson for Next Gen, and Sam Heading in the number 57, the privateer. Oh, Bunching at the first hairpin. And Kasper Zak runs a little bit wide. Oliver Marsh picks up a place. Oh, defensive manoeuvre going up the short shoot. Theo McCorris in the number 74 Virtus Motorsport cart was trying to pass the 68 of Casey Gibson and Casey Gibson was having none of it. And uh, eased McCorris to the inside and McCorris eventually... Had to back out of it. And on to the start-finish line we go to complete lap number two. And start lap number three. Oliver Behrman now sets the fastest lap of the race. 68.50. Mason and Behrman have drafted past Ellingham. And the number eight cart of Mason led briefly. But Behrman isn't generally one to hang about when it comes to making passes and he takes the lead he prefers to be at the front some drivers like sitting behind and pushing the rival along in second not so for Oliver Behrman which is why he is the British Open champion but it's also why he can occasionally put himself in exactly the wrong position to win a race when it matters most. Lap number three. And the Virtus Motorsport O-plate of Behrman leads the field through the Mike Wilson complex. Mason virtually stapled to his rear bumper and he will push Behrman along those venerable Honda GX 160 engines. The most reliable in terms of cost effectiveness in British karting in my opinion it's a great grounding class this the style of racing you have to use with one of these Honda engines is different from a two-stroke but it will remain valuable to a driver whatever class of kart they move into all about smoothness momentum minimizing 
slides and skids. Harry Thompson has picked up P2. And, uh, well, a lot of people in the paddock have been waiting for this moment. Behrman versus Thompson at the front of a Cadet Honda race. And uh, the drivers still know it's only Saturday afternoon. It's this time tomorrow that it matters the most. So there'll be a certain amount of sizing up the competition. Thompson will want to know where Behrman is good. Behrman will want to know likewise. Thompson chooses to work with Behrman down the straight. Ellingham in the 99 for global karting right there as they go under the bridge. Thompson to the inside on the banking. And there is not a lot that Behrman can do. Oh, in fact, Behrman gets wheel-to-wheel -wheel contact with, I believe that was either Ellingham or Mason, who were trying to follow Thompson through. Behrman onto the grass, lost a couple of places, but is still there in contention. It's now Thompson, Mason, Ellingham, the number 55 Project One card of Oliver Marsh has moved into fourth place. Then that all-black livery car of next-gen motorsports, Cason Gibson. He's having his best run of the weekend so far. And uh, Cason Gibson, he could do with a good run because he's only 17th in the overall standings. He only finished one of his two heats yesterday, and that was in seventh place. So when it's running, it's running well. And he's fifth now. Behrman is sixth. And behind Behrman, the number 57 of Sam Heading. And then a gap back to Arvid Lindblad, Ben Kasperzak, Archie Brown, who round out the top 10. Aston Miller, Theo McCouris, Josh McLean and Frankie Elwell are next with Jack Clements rounding out the top 15. Down the hill they come towards the first hairpin. Just under four minutes to go. Thompson from Mason, Ellingham, Marsh, Behrman and Gibson. So already Behrman has uh, passed Gibson and I'm sure you will see that uh, very bright white, green and blue O-plate cart darting out from behind the rear bumper of Oliver Marsh sooner rather than later. The leaders go into the Mike Wilson complex. With Thompson at the head of the train and Mason knows that three minutes to go. Is there any point really in trying to pass Harry Thompson? Because if I do, he's only going to get me back and I might get shuffled to the back of the group. Better to stay in second and try and push him away. Behrman right on Marsh's rear bumper. Looks to the inside. And Behrman actually now cuts back to the outside on the banking. So they're three wide. And Behrman picks up a couple of places. Wheel to wheel with Ellingham. And just a crossover mover coming through turn number four. And suddenly Mason has been drawn into this scrap. And Behrman goes from fifth to second in the space of three corners. But... He now has about a 10, 15 cart length deficit to the race leader to make up. Oliver Marsh in the number 55 cart, pushing Behrman along. And Mason in fourth place also can help Oliver Behrman further back in concentrating on the lead battle. But uh, cart scrapping up and down the field, going through the uh, Terry Fullerton S is there. That's the number 32 cart, Franklin Taylor. Head of Archie Carter and Oliver Fathers. That's the 24th place battle. Leaders are on the start, finish straight once again. We'll check the gap. Thompson completes lap number seven, four tenths up on Oliver Behrman. But the slipstream effect takes that away within the space of one chicane. And by the time they get out to turn two, Behrman is right literally over the rear bumper of Thompson. That was near disaster as Behrman tried to jink to the inside. Thompson tried to put him off and uh, it was front bumper to rear bumper contact. And now Thompson defending and as Thompson moves to the inside, you can look behind you and suddenly two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve drivers. Count them all together. Thompson, Behrman, Mason, Marsh, Sam Heading in that 57 cart. He's played quite sensibly. He's just gradually picked up one place at a time. Fifth is the highest he has been all race. Into the Bobby Game corner. And Thompson defending one minute to go. Mason 
Slides back through to second. Behrman holding off Marsh for third. And it's as you were two laps ago with Thompson being pushed along by Mason and everyone else trying to catch up behind. Oh, three wide into turn number one. There's Kaysen Gibson trying to make something happen behind Kasperzak, Brown and Ellingham. And over the bridge they go. 30 seconds remaining. Next time by, they will see the last lap board. And Behrman and Heading have separated themselves from the chasing pack in third and fourth. So almost without anybody else noticing, number 57, Sam Heading, is moving into fourth place and is pushing Behrman up to the leaders. Mason checks over his shoulder and notices that... Uh, they're not as far back as he hoped they had been. Now, Wesley Mason is going to have a problem. He wants to try and attack Thompson for the race lead. If he moves offline and doesn't make the move stick, Behrman and Heading are close enough to potentially cost him a couple of places. Mason would have liked to have enough room to have a couple of little digs at Thompson's lead without the threat of losing a place. Last lap board has gone out. Well, at the moment, Behrman and Heading are not close enough to do anything about the two leaders unless Harry Thompson begins to defend. Oh, on the banking, the fifth place battle is six, seven seconds behind the leaders, and it's Ellingham in the 99 who is still hanging on for grim death. Into the first hairpin, Thompson checks over his shoulder. Mason does the same. Heading signals to Behrman to don't defend, push. Behrman looking over his shoulder to try and cover off any potential move from Sam Heading. And uh, Ellingham, Kasperzak, Gibson and the 92 of Archie Brown are next. And they're side by side down to about 25th place going into the Fullerton S's. But up at the front, Harry Thompson... Two corners to go. Checkered flag is out. Now Mason's going to try and slip stream past him on the finish line, but he can't. Thompson covers his line and takes a win. Mason second. Behrman third. Good result for Sam Heading in fourth. And six and a half seconds behind them in fifth was Lucas Ellingham in the number 99 global karting machine. Ben Kasperzak. BRK factory team and then in seventh place Case and Gibson for the next gen team and three privateers in the top eight because Archie Brown came home in eighth place ahead of Theo McCouris and the top ten rounded up by Aston Miller Oliver Marsh slipped back to 11th with Arvin Lindblad 12th Frankie Elwell Liam McNeely and Koskun Irfan complete the top 15. So the Cadet Honda contenders stop for their own little debrief in Park Ferme to discuss the previous 10 minutes. And we look ahead to race number 22, which is going to be for Minimax, and I will disappear to go and get the grid, which would be helpful.
Well, we briefly take a moment to draw breath after Cadet Honda before we have Minimax on circuit and 25 drivers. There's been a change, what you saw in qualifying, because Johnny Edgar, who had uh, qualified at the sharp end, has obviously had a post-qualifying issue. I don't know what the issue was, but the penalty was that he starts from the back. Up at the front, it'll be Finley Bunce, the number 58 Thule Motorsport Cart, and Tom Canning, a former British Cadet Honda champion in cart number 21 for KR Sport. Jensen Butterfield and Dexter Patterson are on row two. Ben Fayers and Lorcan Hannafin on row three. Brandon Martland and Kai Hunter row four. Then Joe Ellison and Jack Martin, Piers Henderson and Samuel Harrison. Row seven is Owen Johnson and Lewis Gilbert. Oakley Pryor and Clayton Ravenscroft on row eight. Row 9, Matthew Hudson and Kieran Jeremy. Row 10, Dominic Bush and Ben Burgess. Suleiman Zanfari and Josh Torpy on row 11. Carl O'Brien and Con Davitt on row 12. Johnny Edgar on row number 13. But if I told you that last year, Kian Jewis started last in the Minimax Grand Prix, ended up winning the whole thing. It's not impossible, especially not in Minimax. Lights are out. We're off and racing. Bunce leads them through the Bruno Ferrari ashes. Butterfield slots into second. They fan out onto the banking. And a good start from Ben Fayers in the Project 1, number 24. He is up into third place. So Fayers having a good start. And what a move around the outside goes Dexter Patterson. And Bunce is uh, defending quite early on. And Patterson, at the first hairpin, he must have passed three drivers on the outside in one go. He probably thought, oh, you're slowing down. And so last year's MSA Cadet champion picks up P2. And, uh, well, Finley Bunce obviously felt that he needed to defend. And now, well... At the end of lap number one, it is Patterson from Butterfield. Fayers in third and Tom Canning in fourth place. Canning now makes the move, passes the number 24 cart. Is that so? As they come down the hill and Fayers... Not only loses third place, but then loses a lot of momentum. And has got Clayton Ravenscroft, the number 75, Coles Racing Cart now having a little nibble at him. Ravenscroft from 16th up to 5th. Behind Ravenscroft is the number 62. And that is Brandon Martland for Dan Holland Racing. And try and catch a glimpse of where... Johnny Edgar is, and uh, I'm not able to tell you specifically because I don't have a timing screen at the moment. I will guess it is about 15th or 16th for Edgar. So he's gained eight, nine places, plenty of time to go, and crucially, the pack is closely bunched. The top three of Try to break away Butterfield, Canning and Patterson. But then from fourth place on back, there are no discernible gaps to speak of. Ravenscroft in P4, change of lead. Tom Canning moves into P1. Butterfield tries to fight back, going in the short shoot, but backs out of it. And they're too wide into the Fullerton S's. They're too wide, three rows deep. Looks like a rolling lap going on through there, but they somehow all get themselves round. That is for places in the lower reaches of the top ten. The lead trio. Canning, Butterfield and Patterson. Then Ravenscroft, Lorcan Hannafin in the number 23 strawberry racing cart 
has moved into fifth with Ben Fayers hanging on in sixth. The pole man, Finley Bunt, seventh. Piers Henderson has had a good run in the number 37 Vital Motorsport cart. He is eighth. And Butterfield has his hands full. Bunts now picks up P6. Fayers down to seventh. And Gap back to the new eighth place man. That is number 85, Joe Ellison for Mark Baines Motorsport. And Joe Ellison has got everybody else behind him. I think that is including Kai Hunter. Piers Henderson and Johnny Edgar now on the outskirts, the fringes of the top 10. And we've still got just under six minutes remaining. At the end of lap three, five seconds separated the top 15. Canning passes Butterfield for the lead going into turn number one. Patterson keeps a watching brief in third. Their advantage over Clayton Ravenscroft in fourth place, make that Lorcan Hannafin in fourth place, was 1.3 seconds. Hannafin is the fastest driver on the circuit so far, and he needs two bites of the cherry to pass Ravenscroft. And Finley Bunce sees the door open and also passes Ravenscroft coming out of the first hairpin. Ben Fayers also takes advantage to pick up a place, so Ravenscroft was fighting for third, now finds himself in seventh, but uh, there's a gap behind him to the eighth place driver. I think it was Joe Ellis, and I think it's now the number 95 of Kai Hunter. We will see as they come back towards my view. Out of the final corner comes Butterfield, head down. Patterson, those two carts look very similar, but uh, Patterson, a privateer driver. Under the bridge, will Patterson look to the inside? No. He'll sit behind Butterfield. Hannafin and Bunce are next in fourth and fifth. Sixth is now Fayers. Seventh is Ravenscroft. Then it is Johnny Edgar up into eighth place in cart number 47. So Edgar, 25th to eighth in Five laps, four minutes to go. Now Johnny's task gets a lot harder for the simple reason that everyone else has pulled away a little bit. So Johnny Edgar has got to make up two seconds before he can even think about tackling his teammate Clayton Ravenscroft for seventh place. Unless, of course, Jensen Butterfield, Dexter Patterson and Tom Canning stop working as a unit, which is what they're currently doing, and start fighting. That will slow everybody down and will change the complexion of the race for the final three and a half minutes. But at the moment, as they go through turn number four, Jensen Butterfield, the driver from Kent, hangs on to the lead. Not comfortably, but he's not driving defensively. Now that Johnny Edgar is in clean air, for virtually the first time all race. Let's see what his lap times are. At the moment, Lorcan Hannafin is the fastest. 61.58 seconds in cart number 23. Edgar on a personal best lap as he tries to close the gap to Ravenscroft. He's got Joe Ellison, Kieran Jeremy and Kai Hunter behind him. Then it's Martland, Henderson, Jack Martin, Hudson, Ben Burgess, Dominic Bush, Oakley Pryor, Owen Johnson in the top 20 is rounded up by Sullivan Zanfari. We've lost the Persistence Motorsport number 43 of Lewis Gilbert and the number 15 of Carl O'Brien, fortunately. So we're down to 23 runners with Con Davitt, the CRG Ireland driver, the 23rd of those. And Edgar, new fastest lap, 61.55 seconds. But he is still nowhere near close enough to even attempt anything on a driver in front of him so he's all on his own now in eighth place Finley Bunce in fourth the expense of Lorcan Hannafin Ben Fayer has been pushed along for sixth by Clayton Ravenscroft two minutes to go and when not a case of if when will Butterfield start to have to defend? 
Patterson and Canning sitting in his wheel tracks. Fastest lap of the race last time round to number 58, the Thule Motorsport car of Finley Bunce. So, 90 seconds to go. Bunce proving that his qualifying performance was no fluke. Just uh, didn't have a very good opening couple of laps. Out of the first hairpin come the leaders. Into hairpin number two. It's still... Butterfield, Patterson and Canning under the watchful eyes. The clerk of the course is there on the outside of the corner. Finley Bunce is fourth. Hannafin fifth. Ravenscroft, Fayers, Edgar and Ellison. And then three carts all in a row fighting over 10th. That's Brandon Martland in the 62. Kai Hunter in the 95 and Piers Henderson in the 37. 40 seconds remaining. On to the banking. And Jensen Butterfield must sense that the time is now. He's just waiting for the first glimpse of Patterson's white and green nose to uh, make its presence felt. And then it will be elbows out. As the clock strikes zero in two, one, zero seconds. Finley Bunce and Lorcan Hannafin are closing in a little bit. So Finley Bunce feels that he's still got a chance of victory. But they will see the last lap board this time around. Bunce has just set the fastest lap of the race, 61.41. Butterfield is on a very good lap. So Butterfield is really pushing. There's the last lap board. Patterson, two cart lengths behind Jensen Butterfield as they begin their final lap. Canning swings wide onto the banking to try and get a run underneath. Patterson going into turn number three, but he can't do it. And Finley Bunce, five, four, three cart lengths behind and closing. Bunce just checks over his shoulders to make sure that he's not under any pressure from Lorcan Hannafin. And as Butterfield and Patterson take a defensive and therefore slower line into the first hairpin, Bunce on the racing line gobbles up the remaining three cart lengths and we have a four cart scrap although Butterfield slowed Patterson and Canning down into that second hairpin and then simply blipped the throttle and disappeared good tactics there from Butterfield and I think I'm not sure but it's gone some way towards helping him win the race because the checkered flag comes out Butterfield Untroubled for victory. Patterson holds off Canning for, third, for second. Bunce in fourth. Hannafin and Ravenscroft round at the top six. Then Fayers and Johnny Edgar. Joe Ellison finishes in ninth place with Brandon Martland rounding out the top ten. Piers Henderson, Kai Hunter, Dominic Bush, Jack Martin and Ben Burgess. The rest of the top 15. And uh, ooh, issues on the last lap for, I believe, Kieran Jeremy. In the number, no, I could be wrong. Maybe an issue with Jeremy's transponder because he briefly showed up down in 20th place, but he actually crossed the line in 13th. So the driver's now having to slow down and head back to Park Fermi. Move now ahead to the penultimate race 